Hello everyone. I hope you've been having a great week. Um, mine has been extremely busy. Um, on the good, good news, um, I was able to finish the rewrite for A Christmas Proposal. It is off to my editor and I am hoping to get that um, up and available by the beginning of August. So I will let you all know when that uh, when that does go live. Um, but if you would like to get that story for free, you can do so by signing up for my newsletter. Uh, this short story will be bonus content available to my newsletter subscribers exclusively uh, for free. So all you have to do is sign up for my newsletter. I will put the link below um, to sign up. And it's a great, uh, it's really great to, to make sure you do not miss out on any uh, new releases or sales that I have coming up. Uh, the bad news, however, which has been taking up way more time for me than I would really like it to, is that um, I'm going to be getting my rights back from the publisher for my Finding Anna series on July 31st. Um, it's great news. But it means that I'm going to be um, doing new covers, which should be a great and exciting time if only I could find a model that would be willing to do it. I had picked out a model about two years ago. She agreed to do it. She was excited about it. And then about a week and a half ago, she pulled out of the project. So my photographer and I have been scrambling, trying to find uh, another model that fits my needs for the photo shoot. Uh, we found one and approached her, but she turned down the project because she's not comfortable with the subject matter. So we are still searching. Hopefully cross your fingers, send positive vibes um, that we will be able to find, um, find a model here very very soon uh, because we need to get that shoot uh, happening next week in order for the covers to be ready for the release at the end of this month. So again please cross your fingers. Um, because of all of the craziness that has been happening in the last week I have not been able to do very much reading and I really haven't had time to sit down and come up with a writer tip for the video or for my blog. So I found an author tag on YouTube and what that is is just it's a it's a list of questions that authors answer and uh, to kind of help you guys get to know us a little bit better. So this author tag is 10 questions. Question number one is where's your favorite place to write? Right here. This is my favorite place. This is my study. Uh, my desk is in here. My um, desktop is in here. I really prefer this structured environment. I do occasionally write um, with my laptop on my couch or in my bed, but um, this right here is usually where the bulk majority of my writing gets done. Uh, number two, coffee or tea? Neither. I do not like coffee at all. I don't even like the smell of coffee. Um, tea, I'm not crazy about tea either. Occasionally I will have um, some herbal tea, which really isn't exactly tea at all. Uh, but my drink of choice is Mountain Dew when I'm writing or um, you know, when I'm stressed about something, um, I tend to prefer, uh, prefer a can of Mountain Dew. So that's my go-to drink. Number three, um, favorite book of all time. I had to think about this one quite a bit because I don't really have a favorite book. I have books that I go to for various reasons. I'm, I'm a very moody reader and writer. Um, so what I did is I thought, well, what's the book that I've read, listened to the most? And that would have to be The Twilight Saga, which is kind of a little odd because I don't read a lot of YA books but um, I have this book on audio uh, I have an audiobook of this and I tend to um, 
whenever I need to relax or I'm having trouble unwinding at night, I'll stick my earbuds in and just listen to this. And I know the story so well that I don't really have to focus on the words or what's happening. It's just, and maybe that's because the narrator's voice is soothing to me. I'm not really sure, but um, I couldn't tell you how many times that I've listened to that, uh, the Twilight Saga on audiobook over the last five plus years. Um, number four, NaNoWriMo, yes or no? Uh, for me, no. Um, there are several reasons. It just doesn't work with my writing style. Um, but also, as a professional writer, um, I find that most of my writing schedule tends to be dictated by when my deadlines end, when or when my when my deadlines are. I can't talk apparently. Um, and I know for the last two years, when November came about, I was heading into or was already in deep in edits for a book that was publishing in the near future. So it didn't make sense for me to completely push back my deadline or try to scramble and do writing and editing all smashed together at the same time. Um, so I tend to let my deadlines dictate what I'm writing and when I'm writing and how fast I'm writing um, more than NaNoWriMo. If it works for you, great. Um, I, I always say there's never one right way to write. You need to find out what works for you and go with that. Number five, genre you would write if you had no restrictions. I would probably write paranormal romance if I had no restrictions. And I know some people think, oh, well, paranormal romance isn't that different from, from what you write, from contemporary. Um, but there's a, lot, there's a lot of world building with paranormal, and you have to have a, um, a full understanding of mythology behind your characters and whatever world you're creating for them to live in and that's not something I'm really good at so maybe one of these days I'll try my hand at it but um but that would probably be be the genre that I would uh I would write if I if there were no restrictions or if I didn't feel like I had limitations in that respect uh, number six if you could have any superpower, what would that be? I would love the ability to become invisible and go back and forth at will. Maybe it's the writer part of me, but um, I would love to be able to walk into a room and observe people's reactions and um, how they're interacting together without them knowing that I was watching. Um, it's that people watching gene that us authors have, I think, where we like to see how people um, how people interact and, and react to things and and uh, get those natural reactions without having to wonder, like, are they only reacting that way because they know that I'm in the room uh, type of thing. So, number seven, uh, my favorite author. This is a very hard one. Uh, again, it's very hard. It's hard to pick like your favorite author because again, I'm a moody reader. Um, I tend to really fall in love with um, authors, especially if that's the mood that I'm in. Um, some of my favorite authors are um, Tracy Alvarez. She writes contemporary small town romance set in New Zealand where she lives. Uh, Lynn Ray Harris, she writes a military romantic suspense series that I really enjoy. Um, and then um, Lexi Blake, she also writes a military um, romantic suspense um, type series with um, BDSM elements to it as well. So I kind of, depending on if I want kink or not kink in whatever my story I'm reading, um, kind of depends on where I go from there. Uh, number eight, what kind of music do you listen to while you write? Again, depends on my mood. 
I wasn't joking when I said I'm a moody, moody reader and a moody writer. Um, sometimes I don't listen to anything. If I'm really in the mood to write and I'm really focused on writing, I don't tend to listen to anything. Um, if I'm not, I will sometimes listen to classical. Um, I will sometimes listen to country or even pop. And then if I'm really, really, really struggling um, with a character, I will find the mu music that um, reminds me of that character or I think is what the, that character would listen to. And that's what I listen to, to kind of get me in the mood. But I, I'm really good at being able to block out uh, words so that it, to the, the lyrics, so I'm just hearing the music, it just becomes background noise. So I know some authors have a really hard time listening to music while they write that has words to it, but um, most of the time I don't have that issue, and if I find that I am, then I just switch over to classical instrumental music. So it's not that big of a deal for me. Um, number nine, if you could live anywhere, where would that be? I know some authors, um, you know, give kind of fanciful answers to this, like, oh, I'd love to live in London or Venice or, you know, Sydney. While those are places that I would really love to visit, I don't think I'd ever want to live there. Um, to me, my ideal place would probably be Tennessee. Uh, it's a little warmer than Ohio, so they don't have quite as drastic winters. Um, nice rolling hills, trees, and um, lakes, and rivers, and just, I, I like that being close to nature. Now, that being said, I wish I could have a beach, like an ocean beach there in Tennessee too. I know that's not possible since it's landlocked. But, you know, that would kind of be my ideal. If I could have the Tennessee interior and then, like, on the edge of it, I could have, you know, maybe, like, North Carolina's beach area, get the combination, and then I would be perfect. I'm not perfect at all. Um, and number 10, uh, what do you do when you have to write and you have writer's block? I'm one of those weird people that talk to themselves and I especially do this when I have writer's block. Most of the time when I have writer's block I'm having difficulty with uh, with the character's motivation for the scene. I'm not understanding why they're trying to take me in a direction that they're trying to take me in. So I need to work out why that is. I need to talk out why they are um, why they are feeling and reacting the way they are. And once I understand that, then I can, I can kind of jump off the cliff from there and continue on with the story. So hopefully this uh, let you get to know me a little bit more. I am hoping to be able to make another video next week. Uh, a friend of ours is going to be having um, a minor surgery um, this coming week, and uh, we're going to be having to help her out a little bit so um, I'm not sure how much time I will have next week to uh, to make the video and post it but we'll see what happens um, what might have been the fourth book in my Daniels Brothers series is still available on all major retailers I will put the link to my website um, my Daniels Brothers page on my website below so you can um, get that if you um, if you have it already, the um, the entire Daniels Brothers series is all will all be there as well um, as what might have been. And if you have any questions for me or comments on this video, please leave those in the comments below. Until next time, happy reading.